What is going on guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we are polishing quite a lot of things. Let's have a look at the game right now so you have a better feel of what is going on. So, uh, first thing off you might notice is we have a different camera angle. We also have different lane size, as you might be able to tell we have a little, little bit different, we have a little bit more room in between uh, lanes right now. We also have this very uh, empty room at the beginning, so when you start the game, you have about 20 meters, you have two transition segments being spawned. Just to give us some room to do the uh, animation a little bit later on, the animation where you're going to be starting on this side, say looking at um, something, whatever it is, and then once you press play, your camera is going to rotate towards the gameplay and you can just jump right into the action. So this is something we'll eventually have. This is what we have now, uh, a little bit of room in between the spawning and the pingu. Now, next up we have a skybox, we have different lighting settings, we have a plane beneath us that actually follows us around. And that is pretty much what we're going to be doing today. So we have a bunch of little changes to do to polish the game, guys. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we'd like to do right here is start with the camera angle. I really don't like the camera angle right now. We don't have something that is really fun to play with, as you can tell. So let's give it a different angle. I'm going to go with an angle of 15 in X. Now, I'm doing all these modifications right here. Um, while the game is playing, I'll have to redo them in a moment. But just to make sure we can actually toggle this, what if we put an offset of 0 minus, actually 0, 6, and then minus 8? Something like that might be a little bit better. Let's, let's try and tweak it if we can. Have to remember that um, you're, you know, you gotta stay inside of the focus of the camera. So I think this is perfect. And here is the settings I've been using. So for the offset, I have 0, 6, and minus 7. And for the rotation, I have 15 in X. Now if I play this again, let's make sure everything is fine. We end up with something like this, which is way easier to see in the end. That was something fairly simple to do. Next up, we're going to be um, adjusting the lane size. So to adjust the lane size, we have to change two things. First up, under the player motor, so let's open up the player motor script. There is at the very top of the script, there should be a constant that says lane size. And it's just booting on my other screen right now. Let's drag this here at the very top. We have a lane distance of 2.5. Let's let's make that 2. Point, actually, we had lane distance of 2. Now let's put that on 2.5. And uh, unfortunately, that's not going to be enough to just fix everything. We still have to change the segments. So I'm quickly going to go under my prefab folder, find the segments, and I'll just drag them all right here. Now let's take center 10. Everywhere it says uh, minus 2 is now minus 2.5. And everywhere where it says 2 is now 2.5. Simple stuff, let's have a look. Um, if we just pull this out. This looks fine. Let's make sure we put it back on 0, hit apply, then we can delete it. Now for the center ramp. Long block here is fine. Actually, no, that's fine. Also fine. Let's do minus 2.5, minus 2.5, and this is 2.5. Save this again. This lighting is fine, it's in the middle lane. This long block has to be on minus 2.5 and this one on 2.5. Okay, cool. We're going to hit apply, press play, see how it looks in the game now. And here they are, so they're not really merging anymore. Just a little bit here, but I think that is subtle enough and it gives us enough room to play. So this is the, the actual size we'll be using, so 2.5 in between the lanes. Okay. Alright, so next up, let's avoid this right here. So the game isn't even started and I'm basically already on the ramp. So let's give ourselves some buffer room at the beginning. This is quite simple to do if we head over to the level manager. Let's go to the very top. Uh, we have the initial segment here. I'll just duplicate that and call, let's say, initial, oops, initial transition segment. So if you didn't guess it already, we're going to be spawning some transition in the initial 10 here. Um, and I thought that 2 would be fair. So if you have 2 empty space, that's like 20 meters to give you some room. And um, yeah, so I think, I think that's fair. Let's go over to the initial spawning phase, which is right here in the start. So we do a 4 in I. As long as it's smaller than the initial segment, we just 
do a generate segment. Now let's go ahead and say if i is smaller than initial transition did I make a mistake here? Oh yeah I forgot an i that's why that's why it didn't fit. My bad okay. So if i is smaller than that then let's go ahead and do a spawn segment. Actually no sorry a spawn transition. Else we can just do the usual, which is to spawn a, well, do a generate segment. Having this done, we're going to play the game. And as you can tell, now you have 20 meters at the beginning. Now, this might look like a lot, and it actually is right now with this view. Um, but do remember that eventually, our camera is not going to be there at the beginning. Our camera is going to be facing, say, this direction, and there's going to be like a weird asset on this side, like some kind of... I don't know, some kind of animation going on. And then once we play, then it's going to go ahead and revert back to this angle instead. So I don't think 20 meter is too much. I think it's just perfect. It does give us enough, enough time to turn the camera and then just head right into the gameplay. Okay, so something I've also noticed is that this log, it feels like it's actually a little bit tilted towards the left. We can change that no problem on... Um, on the prefab without changing the colliders of course so should we go ahead and do that right now let's go ahead and do that I'm going under center center ramp let's drag them all again actually no my bad we don't have to drag these we're going to be dragging the pieces instead in the game so where is it at P1 and I'm just going to be stacking P0 on top of it just to have a better feeling of where it should be so as you can tell um, P1 over here is going a little bit towards the left here. Let's try to center it a little bit more and see if we can give it some elevation, can we? Yep, something like that could work. Alright, let's save this prefab, hit apply, and we should now be good to go. It looks a little bit better. And uh, yep, so we have that completed. Today is all about doing like a little bit of polishing everywhere. So uh, thus far, we change the camera angle, we change the lane size, we span these things further, we just fix that prefab. Let's also this plane over here, the plane that we're sitting on. Um, oh, this was not part of the last episode. My bad. So when we when we left last episode, we actually had a plane that is something like this, I believe, like a very long plane that would go on forever. Um, not really forever actually, it would stand like, it would have like a, a crazy z-axis. But I've did some change and I'd like to do them with you right now actually. Is uh, instead of having that, we have a plane that is actually following the player. So if we just make this a little bit smaller, like this. Say 10 by 10 by 10. We have a plane and that plane is now following the player like this. It doesn't look like it, but it's something we'll require in the end to bend the world. Um, properly, so we're gonna go ahead and actually code this script. It's a very very simple script. You'll see it If we open it up, I have a private transform player transform in the start I make sure to assign it using the um, the find object with tag player and Then eventually in the update I make sure to change the position of the plane. So our transform to uh, vector 3 dot forward times the position in Z. I can't just say player transform that position. If I did that, it would actually follow me when I jump as well, so obviously that is not something we'd like. Um, yeah, so we have to make sure we actually say vector3.forward times the position in Z. This way, it's always going to be following our player around. So, um, I know, actually, I forgot to do that in the video. I did it offline, but still, very simple script. You can make sure you copy it. It's going to take a second. Alright, so next up, we could be playing around with the skybox. So, um, we didn't have any skybox in the in the actual asset pack, so uh, in case you do want to have a skybox with, let's say, cloud and stuff, uh, we're thinking about adding one right now, but we're not sure, so the one we're actually rolling on with the game right now is actually a uh, procedural skybox. And you can have one of those by right-clicking anywhere in the project, create a material, let's call that skybox, and I'll just be dragging it inside of the artwork folder just to keep it clean. Um, and now what you do, you're going to do is go under shader, make sure you're under shader, then procedural. With this, you can go ahead and drag and drop this guy box, just like this, 
and now we can play around with the colors a little bit so we're actually not using a sun um, sun size is zero now for the atmosphere thickness we're using something like 0 0.87 it's something we've done offline I'm just testing out some lighting and then for the sky tint we are using this color right here which is 5C 8F 90 and then FF for the ground we are using D1, F9, F8, and then FF. And finally, the exposure is at 1.05. So this is the settings we're actually using. It gives you a skybox like that, which is, you know, super light. And um, actually makes the rest look good. Let's give it a look. This is how it currently looks in the game. Now, there is one thing we actually turn off. We turn off um, the shadows. Now, just adding a skybox is not going to be enough to make this look good. Um, so what we can do is actually play with the lighting settings of the scene by going under window, lighting, and then settings. I'll just make sure to uh, anchor this here, why not? And um, here's uh, here's our actual settings we use for that game. So under environment lighting, we're using the source, it's a gradient, and then for the color, I'll just give them to you really quickly. Those are the color we are using. So first up we have the 4A, C6, and then F9. And then we have B4, 8, 9, and 8, 5, and B9, D0, and DC. Of course, those are just, you can of course try something to make it look better. We're not using real-time uh, GI, we're not using mixed lighting either. And at the moment, we are not using fog either. So those are our settings, let's give it a try in the game. We end up with something like this, a little bit too bright at the moment, but we're going to be fixing this quite soon. Um, the actual next step we'll be using though is going to be to go under the directional light. Make sure we turn off oh, we turn off the shadows. So we don't want to have hard shadows, we don't want to have soft shadows, we just don't want shadows overall. And just like this we are going to not have those little glitchy shadow map like laying down. Um, of course this game is unplayable right now simply because it is so bright we can't even see. If anything I'll try to actually remove this plane and see if it a little bit better. Yeah, it's a lot better if we remove the plane. So if we change the floor color, it's gonna give us uh, enough enough room to see, basically. So I am back on directional light. I like to make this light actually um, white, and I've put a different rotation of 125 in X. Gives me uh, just a little bit of tweaking, you know, just tweak a little bit to have it look better. And in my case, I think this looks better. Now the only thing I'm really missing here to actually be able to play this game is different material on the floor. This floor is definitely way too white and we can't really tell the difference in between the floor and the long blocks. So here is what we'll be doing. We'll be um, creating a new artwork. So under artwork I'll be creating a new material. This one is going to be a floor. And let's just drag and drop this on top of this thing. Let's give it a new color. So maybe like a little bit more grayish or let's go into, into blue. I like that color. That color is great. Okay, so this doesn't look really good at the moment. What if we actually bump up? We have to play around with this. Um, but something that actually I don't want to do is play around with these other settings down here. Since in the end, we won't be using the standard shader. We'll be using our own shader to make sure we bend the objects. And we also have to bend the floor. So the only thing we can really play around with right now is the colors. Now one thing you're going to realize at the moment is that our plane, we can see the end of the plane and it doesn't look very good and that is not something we're going to be uh, bothered by at the moment. Simple reason is as soon as we do have our bending shader, we won't be seeing this. The camera won't be seeing this because it's going to bend um, going down so we won't be able to see the end. We won't even be able to see the object spannings in the back. But yeah, that's actually where we're going to be ending this episode. We did a lot of little tweaks that are going to make our game look a lot better in the end. I know it looks a lot better right now, so so I recommend you actually just boot this on your device. Have a look on your device, see if it looks good to you, if you can tweak the lighting a little bit. Play around with the final build because it is a little bit different on your device um, than it is right here in the editor. So guys, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Click the video right now to go to the other one where uh, we are going to be bending the world. So we're going to be seeing that nice bend they have in the original game. and. Uh, it's going to hide the fact that we have object spawnings in the background. It's going to hide the fact that our plane is not infinite. It's going to be making look, uh, making everything look so much smoother. So go ahead and click on that video. Check out the links in the description down below to help us do what we do right here. And uh, thank you so much for watching.
I'll be catching you in the next one. Cheers.